thank you so much. I am Meredith Copeland with the Career Development Office here at Angela State University, and I am your Employer Relations Coordinator. Um, so what we've got today, we have Halliburton back for part two of their readiness event. They're going to talk to us all about interviewing um, and those do's and don'ts of interviewing. So as you guys are listening to it, I know Amanda will get started here shortly, but we love good interaction and conversation going in. And so make sure you're taking advantage of the chat box, take advantage of the Q&A, and let us know any questions that you may have, and we will manage those as we can throughout the presentation. Towards the end, we want to know how we can always do better for you. And so we will have a short four-question survey after this. If you could fill that out for us, that would be great. Um, but without further ado, I want to introduce you guys to Amanda Martin. I hope a lot of you were here last week. If this is the first one that you are attending of the readiness event, then you are not behind at all. Amanda is here. She is a recruiter for Halliburton, and I am going to let her steal the show. All right, awesome. Thank you so much. Um, I'll put my video on for a couple of seconds so you guys can see kind of what I look like really quick. Hi, I'm Amanda Martins. I'm so um, happy and excited that you guys are joining me this evening um, to kind of go over the do's and don'ts of interviewing. Um, this might be, some of it might be information that you already know. Um, it might be some information that you don't know or some information that you kind of knew, but you wanted a little bit more um, clarity on the subject. I, my team and I have put this presentation together to give you guys tips. These are things that we wish we knew when we were entering the workforce. These are things that I wish students knew when I was interviewing them. Um, so if you guys have any questions at all, like Meredith said, pop them in the chat as soon as they come up in your head, and then I will answer them at the end. Um, but yeah, let's let's get started and let's get into um, today's readiness section. Okay. Um, all right. So we like last week. We're going to start off with a safety moment. This is just mandatory for all Halliburton presentations. Um, a safety moment or a value moment. And so I thought. Uh, this week, we could do a value moment on just monitoring your sleep schedule. Um, with COVID going on for the past year, some of your classes might be virtual, you know, your sleep schedule might be all types of messed up. And it's not uncommon even before COVID that college students had a rough uh, sleep <laughs> schedule. Uh, the, av the average adult um, should be getting, you know, anywhere from seven to nine hours of sleep. Um, Ideally, eight is that sweet spot. But a uh, recent survey only suggests that college students at most get six to 6.9 hours. And that could be due to a lot of things, right? Maybe you're pulling um, sometimes all-nighters for exams and classes. Sometimes you're just studying late or sometimes you're just hanging out with your friends. Um, that's totally okay, but you have to understand, uh, you know, that seven to nine hours of sleep is really so important for a lot of things. Uh, the first is that it just improves your concentration for classes, right? Uh, the second, it reduces your stress level. And then lastly, it puts you in a better mood. I I know the less sleep that I have, the crankier I become. Um, I didn't realize how important sleep was <laughs> until I started working. And uh, you have to wake up at like seven every single Monday to Friday, sometimes the weekends, depending if you um, have a shift or if you're uh, going to an event or something like that. So how do you make, uh, you know, seven to nine hour sleep schedule a priority? Uh, the first thing that you can do is just disconnect from LA, any electronic devices, right? Um, if I know that you are always so tempted to check your phone, bef like as you're going to sleep, and but those screens can actually... Uh, push your sleep schedule even longer. Um, 
if you just kind of disconnect, switch it off, put it on do not disturb, put it face down on your nightstand, uh, maybe, you know, 30 minutes before you go to sleep, that'll help you fall asleep so much faster. Uh, monitor your intake of caffeine and alcohol, right? Don't try to consume them right before going to bed. They will keep you up just because of that caffeine in there. Um, and then try to stick to a same schedule every day. I know for me, as soon as it hits 10 o'clock, because I've it forced my body to go to bed at 10 o'clock when it's the weekend and it's 10 o'clock, I'm automatically slowly falling asleep or yawning. So that schedule is so important uh, when making it, when making sleep a, pri a priority. Okay, so let's get started. A lot of you guys were here last week. I did see some new names, so I thought I'd introduce myself a little bit. Once again, my name is Amanda Martins. Um, I am a proud University of Houston Cougar. Um, I am currently attending Texas A&M for my master's program. Um, I have not attended ASU, but I have been to ASU's campus, and hopefully once COVID calms down a little bit, maybe next semester, I'll be making a trip up to San Angelo once again. Um, I'm actually a second generation Halliburton employee. My dad has been working for the company for 37 years. I have two older brothers that work in the field. Um, and primarily for Halliburton, I'm a, a university recruiting specialist for diversity initiative schools. Um, so that's like Texas A&M, University of Texas El Paso, Prairie View A&M University, Angelo State University, Texas Tech, University of Oklahoma. But I cover a lot. Uh, I cover a majority of our STEM recruiting functions into entry level internships or full time roles. Okay, so let's get straight into kind of why you guys are here this evening. Um, like I said, this might be information that you already know, um, but I thought I could just expand a little bit more on there so that you can get, uh, you can put yourself ahead of the competition when it comes down to interviewing. So let's go over kind of the four interview styles, just upfront, very honest. The first is your phone interviews, right? Usually if there are multiple steps in the interviewing process, a phone interview is the first step. Um, this really, you don't need a laptop. You don't need a camera. Um, all you need is a cell phone or a home phone. Um, if you're using your cell phone, make sure you guys, you have a strong signal, right? It's so hard to conduct a serious phone interview when the signal is weak and I'm constantly having to say, Hey, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Um, so make sure that you beforehand, you are looking Looking um, at scouting at a location for your interview that has that strong cell signal. The second thing I want you guys to think about is potentially making sure you also have a place that has a strong Wi-Fi connection. Uh, the reason for that is there have been times at work where I am at a oil rig location. And if you guys know anything about oil rigs, they are in remote locations. They're not in like metropolises. Um, and so the cell signal is really weak. And so there have been times I've emailed male candidates and said, hey, instead of a phone interview, do you mind if I have like a FaceTime audio call with you instead, right? Because that's making, uh, I, I'm going to have to rely on a Wi-Fi for that. Or if you don't have, you know, an iPhone, I might say, hey, instead of uh, FaceTime audio, can we do a Skype audio? Or can we do a Microsoft Teams audio? Or can we do a Zoom audio interview? Um, so, Make sure you have a strong Wi-Fi connection if those are um, other options that your recruiter or your interviewer is going to proceed with. So how do you become successful in phone interviews? Uh, a couple things. First, make sure you're, you guys are fully awake. Make sure you clear out your throat at least 15 minutes before for your interview. If your interview is scheduled for the morning, right? If your interview is at 9 a.m., uh, don't wake up at 8.55 for your interview. Um, make sure you wake up at like 8.45 at the very least. Um, get those frogs out of your throat because nothing is more um, awkward or um, embarrassing for the both of us when I have to say, hey, is this a good time to call? Because you seem like you're still kind of 
sleepy or taking a nap. Uh, my best way to mitigate this is if you're a late an, a late sleeper is to just schedule, try to schedule your interviews for later in the day rather than first thing in the morning. Uh, second thing, make ensure you're, that you're in a quiet space, right? If you have roommates or if you are staying at home, just let the people in your household know that you are, um, you know, you're interviewing for an internship or a full-time position. This is a very important interview. If they don't mind just, you know, being a little bit quiet for 15, 30 minutes at most. Phone interviews are not long, you guys. Um, so you just need that, that peace and quiet to really focus on this. Third, make sure your phone is fully charged. Nothing interrupts the flow of an interview more than when the, the candidate is like, hey, Amanda, is it okay if, I, if we can stop for a couple minutes? I need to find my charger and plug it in. If we have scheduled this interview beforehand, right? If I I'm not calling you out of the blue, you know when the interview is. So your phone should be fully charged in preparation for this interview or should be already plugged in to a um, electrical socket um, during your interview. Uh, and lastly, listen and don't dominate the conversation. Um, in a phone interview, yeah, I mean, yes, you are being interviewed, but, and you need to like brag about yourself. But the thing is in phone interviews, candidates can't really see facial cues of their interviewers. So they don't know when to move on to the next question or to pause and let the recruiter write down some notes per question. So my best advice on this is to keep your answers brief, but answer it to, to the best of your capabilities. And if your recruiter is going to ask you for more in-depth answers, they'll ask you a follow-up. Um, or they might say, hey, can you expand a little bit more on this? Or can you go a little bit more in-depth? Um, they'll initiate that conversation first, uh, first and foremost. If you dominate the conversation, you're taking up time in your interview um, where you're explaining details that don't really need to be explained. And you're taking up time so that the recruiter can ask you, can't ask you the rest of the questions. So just be conscious of that. The second type of interviews are in-person interviews. These are agreed upon uh, location, a face-to-face -face interview, uh, not very common in 2020, 2021 because of COVID, but uh, you know, this is something that's gonna start happening again in the next couple of semesters. So you need to be aware of how to best handle these. Usually in-person interviews are you know, at, your, at a career center on campus somewhere. Um, it could be at a corporate office, right? You're being taken to the company to actually have that interview. But I also consider in-person interviews to be any face-to-face -face interaction. So if your recruiter or your interviewer says, hey, let's go grab coffee really quick, or hey, let's, why don't we have lunch and discuss this position a little bit more? Uh, when I joined Halliburton, my interview was not an actual interview per se. It was a face-to-face -face interaction at a meal. Um, and the reason for that is my position is very customer focused, right? I'm talking to students. I'm talking to the career centers. I'm talking to corporate uh corporate people, uh, employees. And so they wanted to see how I handled myself in a public setting. Um, so you're being interviewed from the moment you leave your car to the moment you enter your car again. They're judging how um, you talk to the waiter or the waitress or how you talk to the valet people. Um, every small thing that you think you're not being uh, interviewed for or judge for, you are. So you have to be careful in these in-person interview settings. Don't think of it just as an on-campus visit or a corporate interview. There are any face-to-face -face interaction. So how do you become successful for in-person interviews, right? So um, getting there early and checking in at least 10 minutes before your interview. If you come late, right? If you are rushing, uh, that's not going to give you a best first impression. But if you come like an hour early, uh, 
Uh, that's also, it, it's not a bad thing. It's just an awkward thing. The recruiter is going to feel rushed to try and get to you and try to keep you busy. Um, usually we found 10 to 15 minutes is that sweet spot for getting early, settling in, getting your nerves out of the way, being comfortable in the interview space. Um, so yeah, just make sure you are early, but not too early. Uh, secondly, dress appropriately and make sure you look presentable. I'll, I'll go over this in a couple more slides, kind of what is um, what dress wear is appropriate and not. But I'll give you guys the best answer just very briefly. Your career center is going to be your best help on this uh, company to company. Uh, they'll give you the best, most recent advice, um, and they'll tell you if you look professional or not. Um, third, have several printed copies of your resume. Yes, they are interviewing you, and they might, they'll, your interviewers will have copies of your resume, right? But it could happen that a manager who wasn't set to interview you because they were super packed with meetings all day actually has 10 to 15 minutes that they can pop in really quick and just talk to you in a, on an informal level. And what really helps, what makes you really stand out is if you have that extra copy of your resume and give it to that person that's just stopping by. Um, it stands out because they're not having to share a copy of their resume. It shows that you are prepared and you are welcome to any questions or comments about the about yourself, about your job experience, about what you're looking for. And lastly, maintain good eye contact and posture throughout the interview, right? Um, is just making that the great first impression with your interviewers. Third type of interviewing method, that's the video interviews. This is becoming super popular because of COVID, um, but it's also super popular right now because it allows companies to kind of access uh, global talent, right? Because people are working remotely now, um, recruiters are able to talk to not only people within their location, within their general vicinity. They're able to talk to candidates in India or Australia or even San Angelo, right? If I am interviewing here in Houston. Um, the last reason why virtual interviews are so popular right now is because it's super cost effective to the company company. Um, companies are not having to send me or uh, an interviewer to San Angelo. They're not having to pay for the flight or the hotel or any of those extra costs. Um, and it really just speeds up the recruiting process. If I video interview you today, I could potentially have an offer for you by tomorrow because as soon as my interview is done, I'm talking to my manager and we're discussing this and we're moving very, very fast. Um, as of right now, 88% of interviews in 2021 are being conducted over video conferencing tools. So make sure you guys are, are aware of those most common platforms. So make sure that you are familiar with Zoom, with Skype, with Microsoft Teams, even with Google Hangouts. It's not that you have to be a pro at this, but if you log in early or if you set up a fake meeting with some of your friends just so you guys can both test out the platform it'll help you in the long run feel more comfortable when it comes to your interview so some best tips on being successful make sure you're pro appropriately dressed right make sure that you are not just a uh, business up top party in the bottom which is your pajama pants or sweatpants um, there have been times where i've interviewed candidates last year where um, I was interviewing a person and his dog ran into the room. He got up to push the dog out and he was wearing a suit and tie at the top, but then sweatpants at the bottom. I find it funny. Most people would find that funny and, you know, very common in 2021, but you can't say that every single interviewer is going to feel the exact same way, right? They might say, oh, that was super unprofessional of them, um, and then move on and not take that candidate seriously. So if you dress from head to toe for your interview, and then as soon as your interview is done, 
pop back into your sweatpants. Nobody is the wiser. Nobody knows anything that you're doing. Um, and you, you'll set yourself apart for sure. And it avoids any, un, uh, un, any uncomfortable situations. Second, make sure your background and your surroundings are clean and that you're in a quiet, appropriate space. That quiet space just goes back to that first thing that I talked about in phone interviews. Let your roommate know, let your housemates know, let your parents know that you're in an important meeting or interview. If you just can get some peace and quiet for 15, 20, 25 minutes, that would be super appreciated. Background and surroundings, you guys, if your wall behind you is not appropriate, if you have posters that are not appropriate, take them down or find a new location, right? Um, or you can just have a virtual background, but be careful about your virtual background as well. Third, test out your video and audio quality prior to your interview. I talked about this in the last slide, but you um, want to test out your platform. Make sure your audio is great. Make sure your video, if you need to order a webcam, you can do that beforehand. You're not like crying about it the day of the interview and freaking out. Um, fourth, turn off all notifications on your computer during your interview. Mute your phone, you guys, mute your phone, mute your phone, mute your phone. Um, it is very, uh, what's the word? It is very distracting for both the interviewee and the interviewer when phones are going off. Um, so make sure your attention is solely on the interview. Put your phone face down. Um, put your computer on do not disturb. Um, mute your notifications just for those 30, 45 minutes for your interview. And then lastly, make eye contact, right? Uh, make sure you're looking at the camera lens, not at your computer screen or not at the picture of yourself. Um, just make sure you're making that eye contact with your interviewer. Very lastly, pre-recorded interviews. This is not a common form of interviewing, um, but it is gaining in popularity within the last couple of years or so. So I did want to touch base very quickly on this. Um, usually if pre-recorded interviews are done, it's done way before the phone interview process. And it's because there are way too many applicants for the position. And what pre-recorded interviews does is the questions are preset. The interviewer gives you the questions beforehand um, or they are prompted and you are just recording yourself answering those questions. Your interviewer is not present. You can take as many tries as, as possible um, to get the best, most appropriate um, video recording. This is great. If you uh, are, you know, if you are a morning person and you want to get your interview, your recording session out of the way, as soon as you wake up, you can get it done, record yourself, and you move on for the next, the rest of your day. But if you're a night person, right, if you are up at two o'clock in the morning and that is your sweet spot for getting things done, you can record yourself um, at two o'clock in the morning. This is the beauty of pre-recorded interviews. As long as you get it done before your before the due date, you can interview yourself at any time or record yourself at any time. Um, and then lastly, just be aware that you might be limited to the amount of recordings that you can try uh, per question. So just be aware of them and don't use up all of them beforehand. So how do you become successful for pre-recorded interviews? Practice, practice, practice. If your questions are given beforehand, um, you know, test out answering those questions in front of a webcam, not recording in front of a, a camera or a uh, mirror just to see how you would look like or how you can polish your answer a little bit more. Utilize your career center. You guys, your career center is going to have the best source of information on how to, um, how to achieve and how to be successful in your pre-recorded interviews. Your career center might actually have a room that you can um, maybe book out for pre-recorded interviews. Each career center is a little different, um, but check in with them and see what tips that they can provide you. Uh, third, don't be a robot. You know, when you are 
when you, if you were given the questions beforehand, you might be super tempted to, you know, write out a script um, and then you're reading the script in your recording session, but that doesn't really give me your personality a bit, does it? So my best advice on this is instead of writing a script, write bullet points for your answer and then ad lib uh, the kind of the in between responses to make it a little bit more flowy, to make that conversation seem like a conversation, not a script. And lastly, don't rush it. Uh, don't rush through reading your answer. Don't rush through answering the question in the first place. If you rush through it, the recruiter is not going to play that, that answer back, that video back, because they have a lot going on. They have a lot of other candidates to candidates to talk to. So just slow down, answer to the best of your ability, um, and show your personality through in these pre-recorded interview sessions. All right, so being successful in virtual interviews just in general, uh, I talked about making sure that your surroundings and background are clean. If you don't have a clean or, you know, um, appropriate background, that's fine. You can use a virtual background. So what is professional what is not professional a background which is fun that you can have with your friends is is like a tiger king right or something silly like your favorite cartoon show is not professional just go with those already preset backgrounds um, on any platform that you use zoom has them microsoft teams have them google hangouts have those already preset virtual backgrounds those are perfectly fine um, avoid certain patterns and colors when considering what to wear during video calls. So patterns like houndstooth, pinstripes, and fine checks, they don't come across well over camera. They actually hurt the recipient's eyes. So just be aware of that um, and be careful about what you're wearing. Some generalized tips for interviewing. Be confident. You guys got an interview for a reason. We want to interview you for a reason. We picked you out of the hundreds of other applicants. So be confident in the reason why you're interviewing with us. Research the company and position why for what you're applying for. Nothing grinds my gears more than when we set up an interview, you know, a week beforehand with a candidate. And I get to the question of, well, Tell us, um, what do you know about Halliburton? And they have a blank look on their face. It takes no more than 15 minutes to research a company really, really quickly. Um, so make sure you do your research. It'll set you for a positive interview, a positive experience with the company. Uh, make sure your resume is updated right? Don't make sure that it, you're not giving outdated information or information that is incorrect. If your GPA has changed, if you've added a job in there, if you've made Dean's list, make sure that everything that you're speaking about is on your resume. Show creativity in your answers, right? Um, make sure your answers are, you're pulling from different resources and different ideas. Don't just pull from the same experience, from the same job from the same role, diversify your answer. Talk about your student org, talk about your first job, second job, third job, talk about your academic career, pull from experiences like that. Have good and thoughtful questions prepared for your interviewer. This is so important. I think it makes candidates stand out when they have good um, questions for interviewers. I will, I have a list of um, questions that I think stand out for me towards the end of the presentation. So stay tuned for that. And then lastly, set up your voicemail. Um, if you, I don't know your school schedule, right? I don't know if you have class. I don't know if you're taking in the middle of a midterm. I don't know if you're studying in the library and you can't take a call. I don't know your schedule. But if you set up your voicemail, I call you, you forward me to a voicemail. I can tell you exactly what you need to hear, why I'm calling, my number, so on and so forth. If you don't set up your voicemail, I can't get in contact with you. I'm struggling to set up an interview with you. I am probably moving on to the next candidate in my list of names. Um, so set up your voicemail is so important. Just some additional information. These are the two types of interview methods, behavioral and technical. It is super important to know which one your interview is going to be. 
this is something that you can ask your interviewer beforehand. Just send them a quick email and say, hey, just want to double check. Is my interview going to be more of a behavioral interview or a technical interview? So you can better prepare, right? So if you have a behavioral interview, these are going to be more situational scenarios. So these questions are going to start with, tell me about a time. Have you ever, what would you do if they're looking for um, responses using the STAR method. So that situation, task, action, and result. If you hit all four um, words for STAR, I promise you, you're going to answer that question beautifully. The recruiter is not going to ask you any follow-ups. It's going to show a thoughtful, well-thought-out response. Um, Usually these situational behavioral questions are common throughout companies, right? It's the exact same question that's asked in every single company. Um, you know, tell me about a time you've worked on a team. Tell me about a time you've dealt with a difficult customer. Tell me about a time um, you've had to deal with a different, difficult coworker or manager. These are universal questions. So my best advice on the behavioral part is if you go on Google, type in common behavioral questions, and you can kind of put together a script almost of what your answers would be based on each question. Um, and you can better prepare yourself for your interview using that STAR method. The second half, that's the technical questions, right? Technical interviews. These are skill-based, you guys. Uh, recruiters are more focused on what your thought process was, how you went about answering those questions. And then finally, there's one right answer. So did you get that answer um, or did you not get that answer? And if you didn't get that answer, that's okay. But what was your thought process behind it? For the, for the technical questions, you guys, my best advice, is to talk it out. Um, thought, talk about your thought process. Uh, make it verbal because if you, you know, verbal, verbally say your thought process, you can kind of look at the interviewer and see if you're on the right track or not. Um, they might even say, they might give you cues. They might wince. They might say, are you sure you want to go down that path? path in specific. Um, one other thing is they, there might not, even though there is one right final answer, if you verbalize your thought process, um, if you ask for help, um, the recruiter is going to be, your interviewer is actually going to uh, appreciate that even more than you getting the right answer because it shows that you're asking for help. It shows that you're willing to learn. It shows that you rely on your team or whatever tools are available for you. Um, so make sure that you are um, setting yourself up for success for these technical interviews. So what to wear? I talked about what, uh, what to that certain patterns don't come across well, right? Like houndstooth, pinstripes, and fine checks. But there are things that are universally acceptable. And it definitely depends on industry, right? If you are interviewing for Halliburton, we're a little bit more of a formal company, a corporate company. So suits and ties are okay. Um, slacks is mandatory or skirts or professional dresses are mandatory. Um, but you can probably get away with no tie, but a button down long sleeve shirt. Um, that's okay too. Um, but if you are potentially working for a startup tech company, right? Jeans might be okay with a really nice shirt. You have to figure out what industry you're working, what industry you're interviewing with and judge best on what to wear. Once again, if you talk to your career center and ask for their help, I'm sure they are happy to give it to you, happy to help you through this process. But some universally approved like tops and bottoms for just general interviews, whether it's corporate or um, a little bit more casual. For tops, button down shirts, blouses, dresses with sleeves, uh, suit jackets and tie. I put suit jackets and tie are optional. They're not always required, especially for entry level candidates. We understand, uh, you know, suit, suits are expensive and you might not have access to a suit right now. So if you just go in with that button down and slacks, 
perfectly acceptable or that professional dress or that blouse and slacks or skirt totally okay you don't have to wear a suit and tie bottoms i talked about slacks knee length skirts you don't want anything super short um dress shoes uh, make sure you're wearing appropriate socks you're not mismatched socks you're not wearing ankle length socks please do not wear ankle length socks with dress shoes you guys um and then flats and heels make sure that you can walk in them um especially if your interviewer is going to say hey let's take a tour of the facility for your interview and then you're struggling in your heels um, for in terms of accessories, jewelry, you want to make it clean and simple. I think simple earrings, a necklace is perfectly okay. I think if you go a little bit too all out, um, it gets distracting not only for you, you might be able wanting to fidget with it, but it gets distracting for the interviewer. Um, makeup, clean and simple works best. Tattoos and piercings. Um, clean and simple. Again, a lot of people have tattoos. Tattoos are becoming universally more approved and common in the workforce. I have super visible tattoos, but usually for interviews, I always wear um, items that cover them up I or I put makeup on them to cover them up. Um, what I, what you can once you get the job, you guys, you can do whatever you want. You can show off your tattoos, get a mohawk, uh, get facial piercings, do everything you want to do. But getting that job is so important. So if you put on kind of like a super simple blank canvas for that initial interviews, um, it'll set you up for success and you won't be prejudged um, for them. Uh, hair, like I said, mohawks and mullets are coming back in fashion, um, but try to stay away from them just for those interviews. Once you get the job, you can do whatever you want with your hair. Um, hygiene, you don't want to overdo it with a cologne and perfume, you guys. Usually for in-person interviews, it's a small room. Your interviewer might have a sensitive nose. And if you are overwhelming them with your cologne or perfume, it's not going to be a great impression. So I always just say deodorant is perfect. And then maybe one or two spritzes of cologne perfume that at most um, just make it very clean and simple just throughout. So when you're ending strong, um, your interviewer is going to allocate time at the end for questions, right? Usually they'll give you about 10 to 15 minutes for questions. Make sure you're using that time wisely. Do not say, oh, I don't have any questions. I'm so excited. No, if you don't have any questions about the role, that is for me a red flag because I've just talked to you about a brand new role. I just talked to you about something you've never done before. Why wouldn't you have questions, right? Um, so make sure you're asking questions that are thought provoking about the role or even if you don't have questions about the role, ask about the company. Um, and I put together a list of very... Um, very good questions that I've gotten through my recruiter experience. So um, some examples are, what does success look like at your company and how do you measure it? I love this question, you guys, um, especially if you are somebody that uh, kind of needs verbal indication that you are doing well, or um, if you are somebody that needs those affirmations, um, knowing, knowing what and how success, success is measured is so important in your personal growth as a professional. Um, is there a mentorship or diversity? Is there a mentorship or diversity focused program at your company? This is a question super popular with POCs um, and also just women in general. This is a great question to ask. Um, if you could change one thing about the company, what would it be? I love this question because for you, it really gives you an idea if this is something that you can overcome, right? If the, if the person, if the interviewer says, oh, the worst thing in the company is the parking situation. Okay, well, is the parking situation a really big deal for you? Um, if not, okay, then whatever. You, you know, this is the worst thing that can happen in, in, in a, a job position with the company. But if they say, oh, the one thing that I would change is leadership. Well, well leadership 
dictates a lot in your professional life, right? Um, that might not, that might be a huge, huge, huge red flag for you. Um, so this is a really great question to ask, um, generally about company culture. Is that, and then the very last one is, is there anything about my background or resume that makes you question whether I'm a good fit for this role? This is a question I think every single candidate should ask, whether you are interviewing for a more experienced role or a very entry level role. This is super, super important because from here, you can kind of guess how your interview went. If your interviewer says, nah, I don't have any questions. I'm good. Um, you can kind of generally tell that your interview didn't go too well, but if they're like, nope, I don't have any questions. I will be getting in touch with you soon about the next recruitment process, or I'm super excited to talk with you further. Um, you can kind of tell that your interview went super well. If you get a response that's super positive and you end up getting a rejection, you can shoot them an email and say, Hey, I thought the interview went well. I heard, you know, some really great response. I was wondering if there's anything that I did or anything that happened that didn't necessarily put me up um, for this position. They could say, hey, unfortunately, we loved you as a candidate, but we just found a better fit and another candidate. That's totally okay. But at least you are getting that feedback and you know it's not a you thing. It is a, um, a company decision and they might be willing to put you in another position if you keep that form of communication going with the recruiter. So what to avoid for interviews, right? Uh, avoid talking about salary expectations at the very, very first interview. Usually this is discussed in that second or third stage. This is something that um, they know going in, they're not going to interview you um, if you are way outside their salary expectations or what you're looking for. Don't chew gum throw it out, please. Um, you do not want to be smacking your way through a conversation. Avoid any talks about politics or religious beliefs. It is, politics is just a no-go in 2021. Um, this is something that also should not be asked by the interviewer in any case. If your interviewer brings it up, politely tell them, hey, I don't feel comfortable talking about this subject. Can we move on to the next question? And if they keep bringing it up, this is a huge indicator for you that this is a company that doesn't respect your wishes or your, um, your opinion. So it's a super huge red flag again. Um, so just avoid talking about politics or religious beliefs in general. Um, avoid talking negatively about past employers. Eventually, you know, if they hire you, they will also become a past employer eventually. And what companies don't want to see is you bad mouthing past employers because they know it could potentially happen to them. So just it, my best response to any questions about why you left a company or a position is, you know, we weren't a right fit at the time or it wasn't what I was looking for at the time. Simple, very concise answer that doesn't probe for more questions. Um, avoid any alcohol, right, or smoking right before your interview. This kind of just goes back to your interviewer might have a sensitive nose, Um you can partake in all of those as soon as your interview is done, but try to stay away from it at least like 24 hours before your interview. And then lastly, avoid uh, any false information. Please do not lie about your GPA, your degree, your graduation. This is all things that can be fact-checked and have been fact-checked before. Um, and students get caught into them all the time and then offers are rescinded. So don't lie. There's no point. It will catch up with you sooner or later. So just be careful about that. That is all that I have for you guys today. That was a lot of information. I know, I know, I know. Um, so really, I will share this slide deck with, um, with Meredith so she can pass it along if you need it. If you guys have any questions, you are more than welcome to email me at this general email. Um, or I'm going to pop in my personal email in the chat really quick. So you are able to email me personally. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions that way. But if you guys have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. Okay. Well, it looks like we do have some that are coming in. 
So let's see. Okay. What do you do if you draw a blank and can't answer a particular question from an interviewer? Is it to better to say you don't know or to develop some kind of answer? Yeah, so uh, my best advice on this is when an interviewer asks you the question, a lot of times you might say, hey, I, I think I know the answer already, right? Or I know the answer, but I can't think of it. Like this is something that I know, but I can't think of it on the spot. Tell your recruiter, hey, can I, can I think about my answer before actually answering it? Have that pause, have, take that time to kind of think about it. Um, and if you still, and you can answer that question that way, but if you still are drawing the blank, um, just say, you know, I'm not sure, but if I was put in that situation, this is what I would do. Give a hypothetical of what you would actually do. Um, I think that's the best um, way to answer that type of question. I would not say you don't know the answer um, because it kind of proves that you can't think on your feet. It proves that you or you didn't have that experience and you can't talk about it. Some answer is better than no answer. Hypothetical or that you just need need um, some time to think about the question before answering it succinctly. Okay. Any other questions that we have come in? That was a really good one. I mean, she gave you a whole slide of questions that we could ask her, really. <laughs> um, Amanda, we certainly appreciate you coming back um, and giving us part two about interviewing with the do's and don'ts and all your tips that you've given. You've offered a whole lot of information, and I know that we talked a little bit about dress in interviewing, and so I want to take this time just to let you guys know that this weekend is the suit-up event that we have at ASU, and so we do have some discounted codes for you to buy a suit through JCPenney and their suit-up event. If that is something you're interested in, we can share that out, um, or I am also going to share my email and we can put that in there and we'll make sure to get that to you. Um, any other questions for Amanda before we let her get back to her evening? Maybe not, any but if they have any <laughs> questions, like I said, you guys can always email me personally and I am happy to answer them. Uh, I'm happy to schedule some time. We can kind of go over them, um, but my door is always open for any ASU Rams, so there's that. Okay, well, thank you so much, Amanda, for joining us again and doing this presentation for us. Um, and thank you, students, for joining us and hanging in there. Let us know how we can help, and we hope to see you next week as Amanda joins us for part three, and that is the do's and don'ts of networking. So thank you, Amanda. You have a great rest of your evening, and everybody else have a great rest of your evening as well. Thank you. Thanks, Meredith.